Welcome to the history of Swedish hard rock and heavy metal. In this documentary, we're going to take a deep dive into the history of Swedish heavy metal music. From its hard rocking roots of the 70s through the first wave of Swedish heavy metal and the growing popularity of hair and extreme metal during the late 80s. And this is the extended edition of this documentary, so I've covered more bands in this cut. Plus, we're going to explore the early 90s this time. So if you're a fan of heavy metal, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Because this is the extended edition of the history of Swedish hard rock and heavy metal. During the first half of the 70s, the Swedish music scene was split into two camps. On one side we had the prog bands. And Swedish prog rock was perhaps not progressive in the music itself, but in its message. The prog bands fought for the workers and the environment, against nuclear power and against the war in Vietnam. So it was practically a left-leaning movement. And on the other side we had ABBA, the commercial forces and more or less everybody that sung in English. And in the middle of all of this, November was formed in Stockholm. And musically they had their base in the prog side of things. But they weren't a very political band, instead they drew influences from nature and the flower power era of the 60s. <coughs> November released their debut album, En Ny Tid Är Här, which translates into A New Time Is Here, in 1970, the same year as Black Sabbath released their self-titled debut album. But uh, November was not quite as heavy as Black Sabbath though. And then in 1972, November released their sophomore album entitled Second November. And the following year, in 1972, November released their third and final studio album called 6th of November. And during this period, they also managed to do a tour in the UK. But November didn't record any more albums and subsequently they disbanded later the same year in 1972. And in 1973, another Stockholm-based band called Alexander Lucas released the psychedelic hard rock single Speed slash Svarta Skogen, which translates into Black Forest. But these guys never recorded anything besides this 7-inch single. <laughs> And then Neon Rose arrived on the scene, and they were often credited as Sweden's first hard rock band. And just like November, they also came from Stockholm and released three studio albums. Two, A Dream of Glory and Pride, and Reload between 1974 and 1975. <laughs> And in 1975, Neon Rose decided to disband. She said 
1977, Piero Mangiarelli decided to reform Neon Rose with new members, but this lineup was short-lived and only lasted for a couple of months. But during this time, they did a short tour with a new and upcoming band called Heavy Load. <laughs> If Neon Rose was the first hard rock band in Sweden, Heavy Load was the first heavy metal band. And Heavy Load began as a trio around 1975 with Ragnar Wahlqvist on vocals, guitars and keyboards, his brother Styrbjörn Wahlqvist on the drums and Mikael Backler on bass. But Mikael would then be replaced by Dan Molén. And it was this trio that recorded the first heavy metal album in Sweden called Full Speed at High Level. And it was released in 1978 on the Heavy Sounds label. Full speed at high level sounded a bit like the material that Judas Priest or Scorpions produced at the same moment in time. And Heavy Load was for sure the heaviest band in Sweden at this point, but they hadn't fully developed their own sound that made them the heavy metal icons that they would later become. But the very last track on the album was called Son of the Northern Light, which was the first time the band would sing about Vikings, a theme that would later become synonymous with the band. And here are some notable releases from 1978. And in 1979, a few hard rock singles appeared on the market, and one of those singles belonged to the Stockholm-based rockers Highbrow. And if you don't recognize Highbrow's vocalist, it was Eddie Malm that would later leave Highbrow to join the Wahlqvist brothers in Heavy Load. And during the last year of the 70s, hard rock also spread to other Swedish cities. In Malmö, a bunch of kids took the name Silver Mountain from a rainbow song and released the single Man of No Present Existence. And in Gothenburg, EF Band released three singles in the late 70s, but they became somewhat more synonymous with the new wave of British heavy metal movement since they relocated to the UK in 1979. <laughs> 
a new decade was here and that meant the end of disco, flower power and punk rock, much thanks to the increased popularity of heavy metal. Because 1980 was such an important year for heavy metal music, with classic releases such as Black Sabbath, whom released Heaven and Hell with Dio at the mic, ACDC released Back in Black, Iron Maiden released Iron Maiden, and Judas Priest released British Steel. So this was a huge year for heavy metal fans. But let's be honest, not much was going on in Sweden at this point. Sure, EF Band released their third single and Turbo from Carl Sam released the single Nothing's Barn. And Turbo was an early incarnation of the doom metal band Mercy. And Paradise released the single Caress of Steel. And these guys would later join forces with a band called Ocean and then form the band Overdrive. <laughs> And in 1980, the new wave of British heavy metal became a force to be reckoned with, but Sweden was perhaps a year or two behind the UK. But in 1981, the musical landscape changed here as well, with the second release from Heavy Load, the 5-track mini-LP Metal Conquest. But Heavy Load wasn't the only band in Sweden that played heavy metal in 1981. And in 1981, the first heavy metal festival was held in Stockholm, and bands like Stitch, Fire Eyes, Red Baron, Heavy Load and Heavy Metal Heaven All Stars attended. And now it's 1982, and the heavy metal scene was exploding, the rehearsal rooms filled up with new hopeful bands, and that led to an increased amount of new releases, usually funded by the bands themselves. And in 1982, you could for the first time buy records from Swedish heavy metal bands like... One thing stood clear, 1982 was a giant leap forward, especially for Heavy Load that had two full concerts broadcasted through Swedish radio, 
and they also released their second full length album this year called Death or Glory. And here are some notable heavy metal singles released in 1982. And there was also another important event that took place this year. The very first Swedish Rock Championships took place in December of 1982, and Europe won this competition against 4,000 other bands. And the reward was a record deal with Hot Records. <laughs> spela in min första LP. Ja, det är er högsta dröm som har förverkligats. Kan man säga. Känns bra. Hur var tävlingen då för er? Var ni beredda på att gå till final redan när ni startade? Eller? Nej. Jag var glada varje gång vi gick vidare. Alltså. Mm. Jävligt glad. Eller trots glad. Vilken låt blir er första hit då? Det är svårt att säga, men bra allihopa. We can clearly see that 1982 was the year when heavy metal became an established genre in Sweden. There were so many bands that debuted this year. And during this time there were mainly two record companies that produced hard rock and heavy metal records in Sweden. And one of those was Pang Records, a Stockholm based company which was started by Lars E. Karlsson. And they focused mainly on 7 inch singles in all kinds of genres. And around 20 to a third of those were heavy metal records. And these are some of the heavy metal bands that released a single through Pang Records. Leslie Pace, Flame, Kinyu, Exciters, Arrows, Natsvart, Overlord, Torsten, Shakespeare, Rising, Victim, Treasure and Zone Zero amongst others. 1982 was also the year when Fingerprint Records started in Stockholm and they focused more on EPs and full-length albums. And they released records with bands such as Axwitch, Mercy, Mindless Sinner, Nemesis, Gotham City and Wiz. So we can safely say that there would have been no Swedish metal scene without those two companies. One could say that 1983 was the big year for the domestic heavy metal scene in Sweden. Several of the most iconic bands released their first EPs and full-length albums this year, 
220 volt from Östersund, switched vocalist from Christer Rossell to Jocke Lundholm and released their self-titled debut album. Malmö-based Silver Mountain, whom released a single in 1979, released their first studio album Shaking Brains this year. Burn from Sandviken released Burn. Six Feet Under from Borlänge released their self-titled album. Gothenburg's Biscaya released their only full-length album. And Gotham City from Umeå released their Black Ritz EP. We also had more established bands that returned with new records like X-Witch, Torch, Leviticus and Heavy Load. And speaking of heavy load, they also rented a place called Draken, the Dragon, and played in front of 1100 people. And according to the band themselves, this was one of the best moments in the band's career. Also in 1983, Torch from Eskilstuna teamed up with Axwich from Linköping and Silver Mountain from Malmö. And these three bands toured Sweden, and the tour was a huge success. Nineteen eighty three was also the first time that our own guitar god Yngve Malmstein appeared on a record. But Yngve decided to leave Sweden and move abroad after being signed to Shrapnel Records. And Yngve played briefly with the band Steeler and he appeared on their nineteen eighty three self titled album. And then later the same year he joined Graham Bonnet in the band Alcatraz. And Graham Barnett was of course the man that replaced Ronnie James Dio in Rainbow a few years prior to this. And Yngwie played the lead guitar on Alcatraz's debut album No Parole from Rock and Roll. (laughs) 
And in 1983, we also saw the first glimpses of glam, sleaze, hair and pop metal in Sweden, whatever you want to call it. Bands that were inspired by everything from David Bowie, T-Rex, New York Dolls to Whitesnake and Van Halen, instead of the more usual metallic suspects like Judas Priest, Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Deep Purple and Rainbow. And all these new bands were often lumped in together with the heavy metal bands, but in retrospect I think we can clearly see a dividing line here. And that the new bands and the new influences made the whole hard rock and heavy metal scene in Sweden steer in another direction. The songs became more pop influenced with catchy hooks and pompous choruses. You could also see it in the style of most bands. Some bands adopted a more androgynous look with more hairspray, lipstick and glitter. And sometimes the focus even shifted away from the music itself. And it was more or less all about girls, parties and a decadent lifestyle. And I'm not saying that that was the case in Sweden in 1983. But you could definitely see that a new trend was on its way. With the debut albums from these bands. Det är ett, ett hårdrockband. Vi spelar hårdrock, bluesbaserat hårdrock. Mer, inte så in, alltså inte heavy metal. Det är, vi skiljer på heavy metal och hårdrock i vårt band. Man kan säga att eh, hårdrock det är, det är musik med lite äldre grunder. Mer blues i, i hårdrocken, till exempel heavy metal. Som, är mer, eh, som jag tycker är mer kall musik. Vi rillar som sagt var hårdrock. Uh. När jag blev tillfrågad att komma med i det här bandet så hade jag jobbat med på Grågefält i sex år. Och jag tyckte det skulle vara skönt att få göra någonting annat, speciellt att man får jobba mer fysiskt. Det är för att det är en väldigt fysisk musik, både textmässigt och... och... Speciellt backstage. Ja. <laughs> ja, det är inte så lätt att heta Egon alla gånger. Då kan man inte dö på oss. <laughs> And one could claim that this was the case with Europe as well, you know the winners of the Swedish Rock Championships. And the album debuted this year in 1983. And it stood clear that the new type of music outsold the heavy metal bands by far. Europe's debut album reached 8th place on the Swedish album charts and they sold over 30,000 copies of the album. But this was only the beginning for Europe. And here are some Swedish heavy metal singles from 1983. 
also in 1983, Anders Sackrisson became Gotham City's new vocalist, and Savagers released the Preachers of Steel EP, which is something of a collector's item these days. And what many people might not know is that the famous Swedish pop vocalist Carola began her career in a hard rock band called Stand By. It's 1984 and the Swedish metal scene was growing, much thanks to Fingerprint Records, whom released a bunch of great Swedish heavy metal records this year. And Fingerprint Records also released two of the first doom metal oriented records in Sweden. And two future Candlemas legends appeared on these two records. Bassist Leif Edling played with Nemesis and he even sung on the record. And Messiah Morcolin became Mercer's new vocalist. But do metal wasn't the only new type of metal that we hadn't seen in Sweden before. My Ninja Blade released the speed metal single The Barbarian slash Ripper Attack on Platina Records, a label that released a bunch of cool heavy metal singles from the mid to late 80s. And Maninja Blade from Boden became one of the first extreme metal bands in Sweden. But even though they were pioneers of speed metal, another even more extreme metal band appeared out of nowhere, with a sound that was completely unheard of at the time. And that was of course Bathory, and they first appeared on the Scandinavian Metal Attack compilation that was released in 1984. And bands like Oz, Trash, Spitfire and Zero Nine also appeared on this record. And later in 1984, it was time for Bathory's self-titled full-length debut album. Say what you want about Bathory, but no other Swedish band were as trailblazing as these guys. They were by far the most aggressive band in Sweden, 
and they were at least four or five years ahead of any other competitors out there. And Bathory was respected internationally as one of the pioneers of both black metal and viking metal. And the band was more or less a one-man project by Quarton, or Thomas Forsby, which was his real name. In 1984, another very successful Swedish-slash-American band was formed, and that was Yngwie Malmsteen's Rising Force. And Yngwie recruited keyboardist Jens Johansson in 1984 from Silver Mountain, and a year later his brother drummer Anders Johansson would also leave Silver Mountain to join Yngwie's band. And after that Silver Mountain never really sounded the same, but on the other hand Yngwie Malmsteen's Rising Force was one of the most successful bands in the late 80s. Also in 1984, Europe released their second studio album, and it also rose on the Swedish charts and even though this record had several faster songs, they also recorded their first real power ballad called Open Your Heart. So Europe was slowly moving away from the faster hard rock songs towards a more mainstream 80s sound. And at this moment in time, Europe was the most popular hard rock band in Sweden. But traditional heavy metal wasn't dead yet. Heavy metal and hard rock sold more albums in 1984 than ever before. And here are some traditional Swedish heavy metal albums that was released in 1984. <laughs> There was also one thing that happened in 1984 that people still talk about decades after it happened. And it was a televised debate between conservative TV host Sivert Öholm and rock journalist Anders Tegner. And Anders was the man that was going to defend heavy metal against a room filled with people whom in retrospect seemed hopelessly out of touch. Uh, hard rock, ja, det är den typ av rock som vi har läst rätt mycket om i tidningarna, bland annat... Uh, det amerikanska bandet eh, VASP. We are Satans people. Vi är Satans folk. Världens äckligaste rockgrupp. Det kallar många den amerikanska hårdrockgruppen hård, hård WASP. VASP. Som besökte Sverige i veckan. För WASP. Eh, VASP. De hetsar upp publiken med ett våldsamt uppträdande. Vad tycker du om den här typen av hårdrock? Det är det hemskt. Jag tycker den är fruktansvärd. Jag tycker det är rent 
röstiga saker. Där får vi stanna för ikväll och tack så mycket Anders och Monica Malmgren som får avsluta det här med en dikt. Varsågod. Gud som har var barnen kär, sitter mig som tretton är och som vart på rockkonsert. Fula gubbar på en scen, rått kött käkade om och ben. Vrålar som besatt om sex, om hur djurets lustar väx. Men jag fattar inget alls, när svärdet kliver flickans hals. Det står ej i Lukas brevet, att de har såklingor i skrevet. Vart jag mig i världen vänder, blodet syns från deras händer. Så Gud, igenom tusen watt, hjälp mig nu när det blir natt. And here are some music videos from 1984. It's 1985 and things had been rolling in the same tracks for a number of years. Hair metal was on its rise and benefit concerts became increasingly popular. And the Swedish hard rock and heavy metal scene decided to join forces and record a single for the starving kids in Ethiopia. And around 80 hard rockers from 29 bands came together. And amongst them were members of Europe, Treat, Badlam, Six Feet Under, Easy Action, 220 Volt, Heavy Load, Madison, Red Baron, Spellbound, Torch, Treat, Steel Wings and Universe. So more or less the whole Swedish metal scene joined in. And the album was a commercial success. It sold over 50,000 copies. But maybe it was here that heavy metal lost its attitude and respect. Thank you. 
1985 other genres of metal started to grow in popularity on the behalf of traditional heavy metal, but it wasn't over just yet. Heavy Load was back after taking a break during 1984, after bassist Torbjörn Ragnarsjö decided to leave the band. But in stepped Anders Fritz and Heavy Load released the Monsters of the Night single, which was their most commercial release by far. And they followed that up with a tour that they called the Monsters Tour. And Heavy Load had sold 60,000 records by now, and they sold well both in Sweden and internationally. But despite an interest from abroad, Heavy Load never did any gigs outside Sweden, except one gig in Oslo, Norway. And the Monsters of the Night single became the last thing that Heavy Load ever released. And X, which also had somewhat of an identity crisis in 1985 with three members being fired from the band, and with a new lineup, X, which released the album Hooked on High Heels, which was a move towards a more commercial mainstream sound. And 220 Volt also released their third studio album in 1985. So many miles, and the If Band released their third and final record this year, and they disbanded after their new guitarist decided to leave the band and join King Diamond's newly started solo project after his departure from Merciful Fate. And I'm of course talking about Anders Allhage that would later take on the stage name Angela Rock. And he's been with King Diamond's band ever since the mid 80s. And here is a snippet of EF Band's final studio album. Another rather melodic band that released a strong album in 1985 was Universe. And here are some Swedish heavy metal records from 1985. In 1985, Mercer released an incredibly heavy doom metal album called Witchburner, 
and this one was definitely a game changer. It was and still is heavily underrated, even though it featured Messiah Marcolin, that will later become an icon in the doom metal field with Candlemas. And I also want to do a shout out to Andrea Veljaccia of Mercy. This guy was the driving force behind Mercy, and he kept doing his thing even though other trends came and went. And speaking of dedicated men, Stefan Björnsjög has kept Destiny going with different lineups ever since they formed as Hexagon back in 1980. And yeah, they are still around in 2021, which is quite amazing. And the Bathory released their second full-length album in 1985 called The Return. And this album was also very extreme. Great album, but maybe not for every fan of traditional heavy metal out there. And here are some heavy metal singles released in 1985. Now it's 1986, and let's address the elephant in the room right away. Europe released the final countdown, which sold millions upon millions of copies, and it became a worldwide success, and this album made Europe the second most successful band from Sweden, after ABBA. And this changed more or less everything in Sweden. Most aspiring new musicians in Sweden wanted to be the next Europe or have their own band sounding just like them, like Treat for example. And now you're of course wondering what happened to traditional heavy metal. Well, Mindless Sinner finally released their debut album, Turn On The Power, in 1986. And the album was actually recorded in 1984, but it was shelved due to fingerprint records having financial problems. And the album sounded great, but maybe it came out a little too late, which is really unfortunate, since it was an excellent heavy metal album. And they had a great vocalist, so the potential for better things was definitely there. And Maninja Blade released their debut album, Merchants in Metal, but due to a somewhat underwhelming production, the album didn't fully live up to the hype from the singles and the early demos, without being a bad record in any way. <laughs> 
And here are some other notable releases from 1986. There were also a few cool singles released this year. In 1986, one of Sweden's most successful metal bands released their first studio album, and I'm of course talking about the doom metal legends Candlemass. Det är Norlin, 13 år från Hoting i Ångermanland, men redan en fullvuxen rock and roller. Den här musiken du ska bjuda på, vad, hur vill du beskriva den? Ja, det är melodiös hårdrock. Och så har du tagit med det bandet hemifrån, hur hittar du det här gänget? Jo, jag bara hittar dem. Där hemma i Hoting? Ja, de heter Wizard heter vi. Vad betyder det? Hur ingenting, för vi har stavande fel från början. Ja. Två säta. Så kan det gå. Den här låten Storm Child, ni ska bjuda på, vem har gjort den? Hans Eriksson, så här. Bredvid. Närmaste mannen här, han säger har gjort Stormchild och det här är Matti Norlin med Visage. It's 1987 and traditional metal seemed to be a thing of the past. A lot of the bands that carried the scene throughout the 80s decided to quit in 1987. Gotham City, EF Band, Axe Witch, Torch, Overdrive and even Heavy Load disbanded after Eddie Malm decided to leave the band. 
Hair metal was on its rise, but also other metal genres like doom, power, thrash, black and death metal started to become more viable options for new and upcoming bands. And also in 1987, Mercy's vocalist Messiah Marcolin decided to leave Mercy to join Candlemas. And Candlemas released Nightfall this year, which was an absolute masterpiece. and Bathory released under the sign of the Black Mark. And here are some other notable releases from 1987. It's 1988 and traditional heavy metal is still dead, but other genres were on the rise and we saw the first couple of thrash metal records come out in Sweden in 1988. And Bathory decided to shift focus a bit, and they started to take more inspiration from the Scandinavian Viking culture. Yeah. 
and Candlemas released another doom metal classic in Ancient Dreams. And during the Malmsteen released Odyssey. And two rather legendary Swedish heavy metal bands released new records in 1988 after a few years of silence. 220 Volt released Eye to Eye, but unfortunately the band decided to move into another direction with this record more into the mainstream melodic hard rock kind of sound. And Silver Mountain came back after the Johansson brothers left for Yngwie Malmsteen's band. And they returned with a new lineup and unfortunately also a new softer sound. And Europe ran into their first speed bump when guitarist John Norum decided to leave the band. And they replaced him with Easy Action's guitarist Key Marcello. And Europe then released the album Out of This World, which was another very successful album. And it even reached the number one spot on the Swedish charts. And Europe was really the only hard rock band that the Swedish media cared for at this point. Also in 1987, Swedish guitarist Pete Black joins King Diamond, and now three out of five members of King Diamond were Swedes. And here are some other Swedish metal releases from In 1988, Alien released their debut album, and these guys became one of the most popular AOR slash hair metal bands of the late 80s and early 90s. In around 1987 to 1989, we saw an explosion of extreme metal in Sweden. Sure, Bathory was the first extreme metal band in Sweden, and they were of course a huge influence on everything extreme that followed. But during the last three years of the 80s, death metal was popularized by bands such as Carnage, Morbid, Unleashed, Merciless, Dismember and Nihilist, that would later become Entombed. And while recording this documentary, Entombed's vocalist Lars Göran Petro passed away at an age of 49. And they also sung in Entombed AD, the band that was formed after Entombed disbanded. But he was also in the band when they went under the name Nihilist in the late 80s. And LG Petro was also the drummer in Morbid. So Lars Göran Petro was one of the key players on the Swedish death metal scene. And he passed away at an age of 49 from cancer, so rest in peace Lars Göran Petrov. It's the last year of the 80s, and Mercy released their first record in 5 years, and their first full length without Messiah Markolin at the mic. And their new album was called King Doom. <laughs> 
And speaking of Doom, Candlemas released another classic in Tales of Creation. And Christian rockers Levericus released Knights of Heaven. And Mindless Sinner shortened their name to Mindless and released an album called Missing Pieces, which was a step towards a more melodic sound. And there was also a few thrash records released in Sweden in 1989. And one of the more popular metal bands in Sweden during the 90s and beyond album debuted in 1989. And I'm of course talking about Meshuggah. And at this point they were more of a traditional thrash metal band. But they would later change their sound and become one of the better known Swedish metal bands abroad. And here are some of the more traditional heavy metal releases from 1989. And one of the longest running Swedish hard rock bands album debuted in 1989, Baltimore. And they took a few years break in the late 90s, but they are still up and running. And this band is fronted by Björn Lodin, who sang for Bad Lamb and Six Feet Under amongst others. Also in 1989, Swedish drummer Mickey D leaves King Diamond, but he was replaced by another Swede in drummer Snowy Shaw. And there was also a lot of hair and glam metal released in 1989. 
and in 1989 Bedlam and Madison released their last singles before disbanding. And Stillborn released Necro Spirituals. It's a new decade and by now the Swedish scene was split into two halves. We had the hair, glam and AOR bands in one corner and the thrash, black, doom and death metal bands in the other. And here are some of the softer releases from 1990. And here are some of the harder albums from 1990. And there were also quite a few thrash metal records released this year. In 1990, Hexenhouse guitarist Mike Weed joins King Diamond. And we also had quite a few doom metal releases this year. Two Eagles Request released the album Out of the Dark and The Test released the EP Thunder Steel this year. And Yngwie Malmsteen was back with a new vocalist after the departure of Jolyn Turner. And Göran Edman was chosen to be the band's new vocalist. And the new album was titled Eclipse. And Swedish rockers Electric Boys teamed up with the Swedish comedian Svullo, and together this unlikely duo released the single For Fat For It, To Fat To. And this single was very popular back in 1990. 
Also in 1990, Entombed album debuted with the classic death metal album Left Hand Path. In 1990, Erika album debuted with the album Cold Winter Night, and she quickly became one of the most popular Swedish rock slash hard rock acts. And she was married to none other than Yngve Malmsteen back in the early 90s. Let's start 1991 with Europe and their new record Prisoners in Paradise. And the reception for Europe's new album was lukewarm because the music industry was quickly changing with the grunge taking over the charts. And Europe did a tour but they didn't manage to sell out the stadiums like they had just a year or two earlier. But they still managed to sell around a million copies of the album which were numbers that no other Swedish band could compete with. But it wasn't several millions like their last couple of records. And here are some hair, AOR, glam and pop metal albums from 1991. And here are some thrash metal records released in 1991. And here are some extreme metal albums released this year. And here are some other notable releases from Also in 1991, vocalist Messiah Morcolin decided to leave Candlemas after a dispute with the band. And thus the classic lineup of Leif Edling, Mats Mappe Björkman, Lars Johansson, Jan Lind and Messiah Morcolin was shattered. And Candlemas have had this lineup since 1987 when they released Nightfall. And uh, Thomas Wikström became the band's new vocalist. It's 1992 and grunge was on its rise. 
But it wasn't that noticeable in Sweden. I can personally say that I can't remember any grunge bands at all in Sweden, but uh, I might be wrong with that one. Because we still had some bands releasing the same type of metal albums this year. Maybe they sold a little less than before, but that's about it, I think. And in 1992, Candlemas released Chapter 6 with their new vocalist, Thomas Wikström. And Yngwie Malmsteen released Fire and Ice. And former Europe guitarist John Norum released Face the Truth. And Dark Tranquility and At The Gates, both album debuted in 1992. And here are some notable releases from 1992. 
But the biggest news in 1992 was that Europe disbanded after 10 years as a band. And John Norum, Joey Tempest and Key Marcello went on with their respective solo careers. Another big deal was that former King Diamond drummer Mickey D joins Motorhead. It's 1993 and we started to see a decline in the hair and pop metal bands, but there still were a few around. And Mickey D appears for the first time on a Motorhead record called Bastards. And King Diamond guitarist Andy LaRocque appears on Death's album Individual Through Patterns. And all-star band Memento Mori released their debut album. And Memento Mori had Messiah Marcolin of Mercy and Candlemas fame in the lineup, alongside Mike Weed and Snowy Shaw from King Diamond. <laughs> Also in 1993, Kinyu released their first album in 8 years. And Candlemas released the Sjunger Sigge Först EP, which was a collection of all Swedish songs by the artist Sigge Först. So this is a rather weird one, and this record should perhaps not be taken seriously. And then Candlemas disbanded for a couple of years just to return again in 1997. And Treat, who has been one of the most successful bands of the 80s and early 90s, decided to disband in 1993. And this year we also saw the first rap slash new metal band in Sweden with the debut album Deaf Dumb Blind from the band Clawfinger. And this album sold over 600,000 copies, which is a lot for a new band. And here are some other notable releases from 1993. 
And that was the Swedish hard rock and heavy metal history from the beginning of the 70s up until the start of the 90s. But the era was at its peak around 1981 until 1984 or 1985 perhaps. And the reason behind the decline was other rising trends, but also that the labels had financial problems. Fingerprint and Pang Records folded their businesses in the mid-80s. And then we saw the rise of other metal genres during the mid to late 80s. And some bands tried to copy Europe's formula, and others just disbanded. And the same happened for more or less all metal scenes around the world. Just look at the new wave of British heavy metal movement in England, for example. It died around 1985, and other more extreme genres took over the spotlight. And there was also an increased amount of influences coming in from England and the United States at this period. Plus it was pretty easy to find more or less state-sponsored rehearsal rooms in Sweden and every little village had their own folk park where people gathered to party and listen to live bands. And we probably had more hard rock bands per capita than any other nation in the world during the 80s. And the state also financed music schools so most kids learned to play an instrument at a very young age. And the magazine of K was very popular, and they wrote about all kinds of trends in pop and rock music. And we also need to mention all the compilation albums that came out in the 80s. Releasing albums was quite expensive, so compilation albums was quite common back then. And some of these compilation albums were region based, and others focused more on hard rock and heavy metal. But there were a lot of talented bands that just didn't make it beyond the demo stage or just had a track on a compilation LP or something like that. And some of those bands didn't release anything officially during the 80s but perhaps have done so in more recent years. So here are a few bands that were great but just didn't make it very far. (laughs) 
And in the 90s, grunge became more popular, so much that the hair and glam metal bands completely disappeared. And the same can be said about the more traditional metal genres such as power, thrash, speed and doom metal. And the 90s was all about groove, rap and new metal. But there was also a death metal scene in Sweden with bands like Entombed, Grave, Dismember, Unleashed and so on that would carry the Swedish metal scene during the 90s. But we're not going to go into the mid to late 90s in this video. But if you want to see me continue this documentary into the 90s and beyond, then let me know down in the comment section below. And feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And hit that bell icon as well, so that you get notified when I post new videos. And uh, feel free to share your opinion on this documentary down below, if I missed any events or bands or so. I tried to cover most of the scene, but there are of course cool Swedish hard rock and heavy metal bands that weren't included in this video. But it's just impossible to take 20 years of music and concentrate it into an hour or two. And uh, that's it folks, thanks for watching, stay heavy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.